Of course, was Don Draper talking about nostalgia, kind of self-reflective, because, of course, we are indulging and anticipating tonight's premiere of AMC's Mad Men, a show wrapped in nostalgia. Still with me, you Penn and Thea Butler, University of Michigan, Susan Douglas, and author of Tim Wise. So I have here on, on the table the Newsweek, the March 26th and April 20, uh, 2nd, uh, uh, 2012 Newsweek, which not only has the Mad Men on the cover, but has redone the entire internal fold okay. as the kind of 1965 moment. History, yes, I love history. We do a lot of history on, on Nerdland, but nostalgia makes me so nervous. That's that's the worst thing about it. And, yeah. and it's not really a knock on the show. It's a knock yeah. on our larger culture because we have a lot of folks right now that are gripped by nostalgia. we got folks running around saying they want their country back. I think I know what that means. We've got, we've got Mike Huckabee talking. I remember a year ago, you know, making the comment that the problem with President Obama is he doesn't understand America the way we do. He doesn't say mm -hmm. who he is. And he gives the example. He says, you know, while, while the president was living in Indonesia, we were going to Boy Scout and Rotary Club meetings. Yeah, who's really? We? Who, who's, who's we? That's right. not that's not folks on the south side of Chicago or Latinos right. in East LA or Lakota peoples on Pine Ridge. That's a very specific right. thing. And or so women. the problem isn't the show. My question, I'm just curious, is why are people drawn to these yeah. kinds of why the pleasure pieces in the first place? Yeah, why the pleasure of that moment? Well, I think it's because you can misbehave. Okay, so in other yes. words, you right. can drink as much right. as you right. want we to. Can have right? Lunches. You can smoke as much you want to. You right. can you know you can have sex without impunity, at least for men, no, there's no yeah, STDs, yeah, there's none of these yeah, yeah. things around, except syphilis and gonorrhea, right? And that's never right. shown up in the show. Yeah. But um, <laughs> you can do the things that you want to do without having to be politically correct or anything. This It's like this moment in Mad Men that men rule the world, women have to be subservient, and everybody else is, you know, subject on somewhere on that scale to what men do. But, the, of course, the consequences of men who behave without those kinds of restrictions was horrifying That's for absolutely. everybody else, Absolutely. And, right? Thus, thus the rape, right? Yeah. The, yeah. the yeah. moment yeah. where, in fact, we we realize we see how much this yeah. struggle is not a cute, friendly mm -hmm. little oh, That's girls right. know their place sort right. of moment. Right. Right. Well, you know, to pick up on what you were saying, you know, knowledge is a burden, right? And people want to escape back to a time when they, the knowledge is that we have now, we don't, you know, we can escape from that. Smoking yeah. will kill you. Yeah. That promiscuity leads to STDs, and that sexist behavior oppressed half the population, yeah. uh, you know, and, and people want to crawl under that quilt for an hour. But, you know, it's interesting because to go back to Tim's point, it's not like there's ever a moment when, when women don't know that or when people of right. color don't know that. Right. So part of what I find fascinating is that, yeah, the, the show has only sort of three million viewers or something, which isn't a huge amount, yeah. but it has an outsized impact in, yeah, I mean, I was able to go pick up this dress, right, <laughs> at, at, at the local boutique by my house, right, because I, I think in part there is this way that it's having a broad cultural manifestation and that people of color and women are engaging it despite the fact there's no moment when we don't know those well things. women I think the show has a particular address for women yeah. because um, and and it's double-edged because women look at the show and they're like thank God it's not like that anymore mm. thank God that you don't have these narrow choices of being a housewife like Betty being Joan who has to use her sexuality to get ahead or Peggy who's you know boxed into a corner Thank God, men. Thank God, sexual harassment is now illegal. Yeah, but and yet, but is it really that? I mean, no, no, that's my point. Yeah, I was going to say transvaginal ultrasound. I know, like, no, 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 right, right, right. I think that's the pro that's the flip side problem right. of the show is that you can look at it and think that women have come much farther mm. than they in fact have, and it can lead to a kind of complacency around feminist politics. So it is a very double-edged sword, I think. Oh, that's fascinating. Women. That's yeah. right. So because it, it doesn't look like that anymore, and yeah. so we forget that what's happening in this moment can have equally repressive. I'm going to yeah. give you the very last <laughs> comment on I, I mean, I do think that's true. I'm thinking about my, my students in my class right now. I'm teaching women a religion, and they don't seem to really understand that things are just are, are getting worse for them right mm -hmm. now. And just to sort of remind them, they, they love it when I show old videos and things from the 60s and 70s, mm -hmm. or sort of tying in on the Mad Men thing, but at the same time, they still don't really, they think that they've come really far, mm -hmm. and they can't see themselves, well, I don't have to be a feminist, I'm, I'm really kind of post-feminist, I'm really this, I'm really that, and then the reality is, is that you're in that same place where these women were in the 60s, and you're going to have to fight for something. Yeah, everybody, you figure this out. <laughs> everybody's post-feminist, so you can't get the birth exactly. control pill anymore. Exactly. <laughs>